Okay, today we're doing some meal prepping. We are doing some boiled, I was gonna say onions. Ooh, yuck, that would be disgusting. Some boiled eggs. I actually got a new appliance, and those of you who may know, I love appliances. I purchased a tea full cook for me. Not sure yet what it's going to be like. We cooked dinner in it last night, so that turned out well. However, um, yeah, we'll continue on to see what else I can do with it. So the boiled eggs will be getting done in that today. So that'll be interesting. Apparently it's meant to make it much easier to shell them and things like that. So I'm wanting some boiled eggs so I can mash them up and do curried eggs in part of my husband's lunches. Some of the um, things that he's going to be having is mixed sandwiches, some pasta, wraps he had today, um, a quiche, um, so things like that. So we'll be doing some meal prepping for that. I've got some strawberries here that I need to get washed and cut up and put into the fridge. Um, so we'll be doing some of that as well. Also I'll be making some muffins, which will be going for lunches. And also we're going to cook dinner in the new machine as well. So we'll give that a try. I wanna get some um, quinoa um, cooking, so a few things happening so stick around and um see what we get done today well here i'm just putting um 200 mils of water in the bottom of my t4 cook for me this steamer bucket and then i think i had about 11 eggs i popped in there goes on for six minutes and then you have perfectly boiled um hard boiled eggs at the end and so super easy to peel um, I will never do my eggs on the stove top again as you may have seen in my past videos I do like to prep my food ready for um, eating and prepping my meal plans throughout the week it makes life so much easier to actually have my fruit and veggies all prepped and ready to go and I wash all of my fruit and veggies. I do actually soak them in um, some really, really cold water and some vinegar to get all of the residue of the, um, you know, where they've been sprayed and pesticides and things like that possibly on their uh, people's grotty fingers that have picked them and things like that. So um, I like to make sure that all my veggies are all prepped like that. So I know they're nice and clean. If you actually do this yourself, you'd probably notice that the water that comes out at the end um, is quite dirty in a lot of your veggies and, and fruit um, so especially the grapes as you can see here they have a, like a bit of a coating on there um, so it's really important to get those really nice and clean and it just makes me feel better knowing it's all done so yes just doing the food prep it's something that I now do religiously um, and everything's then ready to go in my fridge it sort of stops that snacking on chips and chocolates and things like that for, um, you know times when you want something quick and easy to grab it's already prepped it's already washed you know it's um, nice and healthy it's easy just to open your fridge door grab a handful of grapes and off you go and also when it comes to prepping your meals at night if you don't haven't done your food preppers yet it makes that time um, so much easier it was not so much easier but you know your time's cut in half pretty much because all of the prep's already done all of the washing all of the chopping and things like that so quick and easy just to make lunches dinners and um things like that to grab it all out of the fridge pop it on your counter and then you know all of those things all, all all chopped ready to go pop into your um hot pot your um sandwiches or whatever it may be and you have your nice fresh meal ready to go so if you don't do this i highly recommend that you start and um just to see how convenient it is um it may be something that you would like to take on board and do also um it's so much easier as i say and have those little snack boxes all ready um and then your kids lunch boxes and things like that you've just got to pop it in of the morning all done so you're not frustrated you're not half asleep trying to to do breakfasts or anything like that or your kids lunches um super simple quick and easy worth the effort of actually doing it give it a try and let me know what you think
seeing here is we, we're needing to take the boat up on this hoist. Um, it, it's an actual machine which lifts the boat, um, as you see here. They're, they're putting ropes on the boat and there's three of them. You can see Simon here in the yellow shirt and in a second I'll pan across and I'll show you this gentleman here um, with the other rope and there's also one down near the water on a little jetty so the three of them um, all they're doing is pulling the, the boat across and you will see then that they pull it in into what looks like it's going underneath the jetty it's actually not it's an area that the crane or the lift crane lift comes down and can pop the boat into the water now this is a sling lift so I think it has about three slings that attach underneath the boat securely and that enables them to lift it up without it actually falling off so yes they're pulling it in now um, into the back area here this blue thing that you can see with the wheel is part of the crane um, or the lift whatever you want to call it it's actually called a rotor lift is what the actual company is called so they're bringing the boat back now as you can see it'll get into position although I'm on the wrong side because all I'm looking at is this black box I'm trying to actually show you if you look under the box and you look behind um, you know um, to the end there where you can see Simon over near that ute you'll be able to see the boat actually lift up once they get the slings in place here and this gentleman that you see right there with the gray shirt on he's the controller so he's got his little controls there and he's able to actually lift the boat up and out of the water and then the wheels just slowly bring it back and then um, because it's up in the air as you'll see in a second it comes back and then they're able to actually uh, fix what needs to be fixed as you saw earlier Simon was diving underneath the boat uh, when they actually put the motor in a little bit of water was coming in and we obviously don't want that so he took the sawdust down in that little box that you saw that made a huge mess on the actual top of the water but that's what it does you take the box down you lift the lid up you can see the boat coming up here you lift the lid off and it allows the the sawdust to escape obviously and it goes up and it sucks into where there are any little holes that need to be fixed on these wooden boats it's an old-fashioned way of doing it but it's the best way to find out where you've got any little holes so that's what Simon did when he was diving under the boat now the sawdust is actually stuck in the lines of the actual wooden planks here and so when he brings it out he's able then to go and recork those areas because he knows he can. So what we need to do here is put the chain onto the winch. So that's what Simon and Maddie are doing here. I'm simply pressing the button inside, as you can see there, to um, make that motor turn for the chain to go on. Simon's also popping the anchor overboard to make sure he can use the manual um, override as well to be able to um, be able to pull that winch up if something were to happen with the electricity. Dakota's getting a cuddle there. Maddie's popping her inside a jumbo. She must be getting a little bit um, cold. So a cuddle and keeping warm is what she loves best. But she likes to be in amongst it all. So, yep, just making sure everything works well together. Um, so nice and safe and sound once it actually goes out and about. So all is looking good and we can't wait to get it going. Okay, today's the day. The engine's in the boat and it's about to go off by itself for the very first time since we've actually owned it. Um, my husband's getting the, the ropes off at the moment, and that's what I'm looking at over there. Um, he's got a friend on board as well as one of our daughters. Um, they'll be travelling down to Margate, which is probably about a three hour trip down. I'm going to go out and have lunch with my eldest daughter whilst they do that but um, I'm going to firstly videotape 
them going off <laughs> and just laughing. Dakota's uh, running around the boat with her little life jacket on. So she's nice and safe and sound. It's going to be her first trip on there also. So let's get this turning around and um, they'll be taking off in a, in a minute and we can give them a wave goodbye. going to do a couple of laps out here first just to make sure everything's okay. favourite. It's a, um, a churro basket filled with ice cream or a bowl rather filled with ice cream and so forth. Looks delicious. I'll bring you back later and show you what we've got. Okay. Okay. What have you got on yours? Um, so this is the cookie butter mm -hmm. and so pressed churros, cookie butter, this one's milk chocolate. We also have um, Salted caramel dip coming and also ruby chocolate coming. Have a taste and tell us what you think. <laughs> I show you eating. There we go. It's very I'm nice. Sure. It's my favourite. Your favourite one? Yes. Right, I'm going to have a strawberry with some chocolate on it. Mm, it's so I'm not even getting it in. <laughs> Okay, well I am now here at Margate waiting for Simon, Maddie and Jim to bring the boat in. They've actually stopped fishing so they're um, having a beautiful, beautiful run up 
Um, it's beautiful and, and warm outside. There's not a lot of wind at all. It's lovely and calm. I'll switch you around so you can actually see. But um, yeah, so they decided to do a spot of fishing along the way. I hope I get some flathead ready for dinner. That'd be lovely. Anyhow, they shouldn't be too far. I will um, swing you around so you can have a look out there. I said to my brother something about parking, he said, that's not called walking. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 